All right, guys, wanted to put together a quick video that would show you what the Mars can do. It's a, a new unit that we're proud to be able to offer to our customers. Uh, coming from the Raptor S and many other iterations of the Raptor, we think that this is one of the greatest things since sliced bread, um, inclusive of applied ballistics, smaller, faster, um, significantly quicker returns, um, and just more feature oriented to the end user with a lot of forward looking capabilities as well. So I first want to start with what do you get when you get this unit delivered? What comes with it and what to expect? So it comes in a padded case. When we open it up, you've got your Mars, you've got a control, you've got a manual, quick reference card. You've got a uh, lens wipe and a couple of batteries. So I'm gonna move this stuff off to the side and talk about these two things, but we'll first start with the Mars. So physically, uh, it's tiny in, in terms of uh, the button layout. You've got, your, you've got your down, you've got your up, and your range or engage. Also, uh, I call it just a, a menu selection item. So when you get in the menus, those become very important, but to range, you would hit this one. Uh, in the event you did not want to use the cabled solution. As far as size, it is roughly the size of a business card. It's significantly closer to the camera, so it's a little bit misrepresented, but it is tiny. We'll get some more videos put up that way you can see uh, just exactly how small it is relative to maybe some objects you're familiar with, such as a Kestrel or a Raptor, um, as example. Uh, in terms of how it mounts, it is uh, mounted to a Picatinny rail. Uh, preference is always to put one of these suckers at the 12 o'clock position over a scope. Um, with that, it uses exactly one pick slot and clamps on securely. At first, I thought that was going to be problematic, but it was not at all. Um, what's nice too about this mount is not only does it leverage a Phillips head, but a Torx. And in this case, um, I always find that I can strip these suckers out and I over torque them. So this kind of prevents me from stripping it. I've not found that I've over torqued it. This thing has been off and on a number of times, but just conveniently, it tells you literally right here exactly uh, how many inch pounds to torque to. The battery located horizontally in the back, it's, it's just about as wide as the device for perspective. It's a CR123. Um, weight wise, it's 6.9 ounces with a CR123, uh, incredibly light. Overall, the objective um, is almost the entire size. So when you start looking at you know, the, the module itself, it is uh, very nice and compact as, as well as the unit, but you can see exactly it takes up the entire thing um, on the end. The cover swings across, it latches on this ridge and clicks into place. I have not found this to you know, be of any sort of problem. At first when I saw it, I thought it you know, may potentially come loose on a recoil or um, wind or if it gets bumped or what have you. And that is just not the case. Uh, it's been absolutely perfect um, as you would expect when you're spending uh, $9,725 for a unit that is weapons mountable with applied ballistics. In terms of the display, it is a square. Um, it's significantly larger than a Raptor display. Uh, the letters, the numbers, everything's bigger within it. And then when you set the orientation, either at the 12 o'clock, nine o'clock or three o'clock, or if for some reason you want to mount it like this upside down, um, the whole display will just shift. And that's a setting that you'll go in and change, but the orientation stays the same. So you're not looking at something um, kind of like a different view and searching for your dope or what have you. And then the switchology up top, similar to most of these type of devices where uh, like a peck as an example, you have this, this knob that rotates for range, off, settings, or vis laser. And the vis laser is a 3R laser in this model. This is the Mars LC. And the Mars L um, is a 3B laser, so a restricted laser and currently uh, not available. So if you are a local state agency, um, or a civilian alike, this would be the model that you would go and request and procure, and we'll have them in June. So let's take a look at what the menus look like and what you can expect out of the box. So just as a point of reference, 
I didn't read the manual. I never read the manual. I do that on purpose. I want to see how intuitive these devices are, how quickly I can learn it. And for my background, I came from a Raptor S. Um, I've used several Raptors. I know those like the back of my hand, I can go through those menus, no problem. Um, this is, is as easy or easier to manage and to go through and to figure out. So one thing, when you're in the menu, this is your select button, and then you use the up and down buttons to uh, either select the menu and then uh, switch through it or to back out of it. So I'll talk about that here. Let's go ahead and move it into settings. So this is what you're gonna be greeted with as soon as you go into the settings portion. So you've got environment, which is gonna be similar to your Kestrel 5700 data, although this is all on board. You've got your gun profiles. Um, this sucker will take 30 profiles. It takes about a minute to load 15. So if you scale that, call it two minutes to load 30 profiles, quite nice. And it's as easy as hitting this button to select, which I just did, and then hitting this button to move through. So I'm just going in reverse. But if I were to go the other way, you would see that I've got an AX rifle, uh, a six arc rifle, an AW, another 300 wind mag hunting rifle, PSR, etc. right? So it goes on and on and on. And then to back out, you tap this button once and it pulls you into the uh, first menu. When you go to manage gun, you're gonna be greeted with this profile. In this case, I have it selected for my ASR 65 SBR. You can go through it and change the name, the velocity, um, whatever you like. This is a 12 inch barrel, so I'm shooting 2,352 feet per second with a 140 burger. Um, if I wanted to tweak that on the fly at the range, I absolutely could, although I would not because it is bang on. And of course, uh, this unit comes preloaded under license with applied ballistics. And if you have your dope on a Kestrel or on your phone, it'll cross over right to this device, which is, uh, which is quite nice. You're not going to have to go and redope everything with the new system. <laughs> Moving into correction. So, I'll show you why this part's important to me. You can enable wind too. I do not have it enabled. Um, I mostly hold wind and I don't take a feed from the Kestrel whenever I range a target. And I'm usually shooting calibers that are kind of like 30-30 type trajectories. So the wind to me is, is kind of a swag um, beyond a specific range. And when I'm hunting at night, I, you know, there's really just not much wind. So when I disable this, it ends up giving me larger digits and larger readouts on the display over the gun. So like anything else, you can enable or disable Coriolis when it comes to uh, if that's important to you or not, not important to me. So I'm gonna back out and we'll go into ballistics. Normally this would have a reading if you just ranged a target, but because I'm inside and I've got a wall probably, I don't know, 10 feet away from me, it, it's not gonna pick up. Um, however, if I did, it would give you your uh, direction of fire, inclination, your cant, everything that, that you would think would be important, it has right here. And this is how it's going to be calculating your dope. So I'm going to back out. I'm going to go into LRF. LRF is pretty neat. So it's got two modes, precision and speed. I leave it on speed. I found speed to be perfect for anything up to a mile. Um, I was freehanding this unit at a tree line with some friends out in Southern Oklahoma. And uh, we, we quickly got on the tree line just by pointing it in a general direction. And we were ranging, I think it was just over a mile around 1800 yards. But at any rate, um, if you want a more precise range beyond 1500 meters, perhaps you move it to uh, the other selection, which is precision. Now, what I find really cool is the ability to select first, best, or last. I like best and it's going to give me the best average of the target when it ranges and does its pulse. Um, with that, if you're ranging through a tree line, perhaps last is better, and you're gonna wanna range through those trees and hit a steel target on either side, or say a coyote or a pig or a deer, whatever it might be. Kind of in tune with that same comment, we have a min range gate as well as a maximum range gate. I have not touched these. This is how it came set out of the factory box. Um, but if you don't want anything to be picked up inside of 300 yards, I would say you could easily make that your minimum range gate and uh, maybe a line of sight type shot. Uh, totally user configurable, extremely simple. Highly recommend that you go in here and figure out what works best for you. But those are my settings. Units, um, 
you know, depending on what type of units you like to view or use or look at, uh, you can go in here and tweak all the settings. The one that's most important to me is the range, which I prefer yards over meters, but uh, everybody's a bit different from that front. Settings, we've got display brightness. I've got my brightness set up um, in medium low, and it's set up that way because I wanna be able to read it with the camera. Otherwise, it will, it'll be a little bit too bright, which is a high quality problem. Usually when you have these devices and you're outside um, and you've got the, the sun at your back, it bleaches out the display and it's very difficult for you to be able to read um, reader dope. So in this case, uh, I will turn it up to its brightest setting. However, for the, the sake of uh, this video, I have it down lower and typically in a bright sun, I can still read the display. If it hits just right, it bleaches it completely out and you'll find that happens with every single device out there. Um, number of other settings in terms of timeout, sensitivity, status LED, which would be over here. Um, but you can roll through these menus and, and make adjustments as you see fit. We've got Bluetooth. Bluetooth is where you would connect your phone, your Kestrel, uh, typically used to crank over your, your profiles. That way you don't have to manually enter them. Otherwise, if you don't have those, you can, you can definitely enter your applied ballistic data in here. Uh, ballistic coefficient, height over bore, velocity, bullet diameter, length, etc. So that is a roundabout here. Now I'm gonna switch into range mode because I wanna show you exactly what that looks like. Um, it will not read right now because I'm inside and the range gate set for 11 yards, which I don't have access to. Although, let me try something. Doesn't look like we're gonna get lucky. Oh, we are, okay. All right, so you can see that um, if it focuses, which it did, you can see that it gave me a readout at 15 yards, time of flight zero seconds. I've got a 3.2 up hold and a 0.2 left based on the wind one that I have entered, which I believe is a 10 mile an hour wind. Um, these numbers are far larger on the display than you would expect from Raptor. Raptor has a skinny rectangular shaped display. The words are tiny. Um, where it says 15 yards would be about as big as it gets on that device. It's usually smaller than that. What's nice about this is because it clears your turret, which is exactly what you would want it to do, and it has larger readouts, when you're behind the gun, it becomes far easier for you to read what your hold is and you can either dial or hold. Um, if you were to enable Win 2 as well, it would make the readout a little bit smaller, marginally so, but it would still function just fine. So what's neat about this device too that I found was um, kind of shocking was when you range something, this whole thing will vibrate. One vibration will give you uh, a range reading or a um, an active range that worked. If it vibrates once and then vibrates again, you had a failed reading. So. Not just this, but this sucker will do it too, which is your control. I'm gonna pivot real quick to the control. So your control can be oriented on the gun however you like. It comes with um, hook and loop, and you can switch the orientation of these buttons in the, in the menus to um, flip it for up, down, or up, down, and then range. This is handy because some guys are left-hand shooters. Myself, I'm right. I have it set up like this. I had to flip um, the buttons in order for it to be more intuitive for me. But at any rate, when you range, it vibrates the same way that the device does itself. When the battery gets low, it stops doing that to preserve the battery. However, battery life on this thing is, is pretty exceptional. The hookup is pretty sleek. This is also an important note. So I'm gonna snap it in. All right, so it clicks in. As you can see, it hangs off the left-hand side. What's nice is it can be completely out of the way of a turret. Other devices might be problematic from that front, um, given that it's so close to where the turret might sit. And because of that, it gets in the way. With this one, I simply hang it off the left-hand side, I loop it around, and then put the controller next to my trigger finger, uh, which puts it in a really good location for me to range a target and be able to get the dope that I need, whether it be day or night. Um, we're going to do another video around collimation. I think there's a lesson to be learned there for most just around the old way of doing it and a more, I guess, thorough way of getting a, a almost perfect collimation. And with that, it does not involve the laser with the exception of bore sighting it. 
And so for us, having a 3B or 3R laser is really irrelevant. Um, and we'll speak more to that. But on that note, this is a 3R unit. So it's a iSafe red visible laser. And when I collimate it, I can hit a water tower at 900 yards. It's kind of my true north, if you will. I have no problem doing that at dusk. Um, during the day, it is problematic, but I can still put it on paper at 100 yards during the day and get it very close to where it's it's got an acceptable amount of accuracy or level of accuracy all the way out to 1,000 yards, which um, is plenty good enough for me and, and can't ask for much more. There's gonna be some neat integrations in the future with this device, such as connectivity with thermals or peripheral devices. Um, more on that front, we can't spoil the beans just yet, but I wanted to get this video out there since there's not a bunch in the wild. Uh, we think it is, is one of the greatest things that's come through uh, from a weapons mounted LRF device in a while, especially for the civilian market. And um, yeah, I think, uh, I think you're gonna be happy with it. So feel free to give us a call or post up your questions and we'll tackle them one by one. Thank you.